I uh, am especially excited tonight um, because of our guest, Vikram Vij. I, I am just absolutely overwhelmed uh, that someone of his reputation would lend his support to us and to this initiative. So like everybody else, I Wikipedia'd you. So I'm gonna introduce you so I know certain things about you. In 1994, at the age of 30, he opened a fine dining restaurant, Vidge's, in Vancouver. And apparently in the early days, his parents uh, would make the curry at their home and deliver it by bus to the restaurant, which I think is a wonderful testament to family. Uh, he also, that year, married uh, Dalwala uh, on December the 24th. Um, his wife was originally born in India, but grew up in Washington, D.C. Together, they were introduced to their mothers, who were old friends, which again shows you how important family is. Um, and by 2003, Mark Bittman of the New York Times was praising Vidya's restaurant as easily among the finest Indian restaurants in the world, in Vancouver. In 2004, Vidya and Dalwala opened a second restaurant, uh, Rangoli. They have collaborated on two cookbooks, which won several awards, and in 2007, including Cuisine Canada's Gold Award for Best Cookbook, and the Cordon d'Or Gold Ribbon International Cookbook. In 2010, the pair published Vidya's At Home Relax Honey, which placed second in the Best Indian Cuisine Book in the World Category at the 2010 Gourmet World Cookbook Awards. You have to give me some time because this man is very accomplished, right? And I edited this. Trust me, I edited this. Vidya's Restaurant was one of the 20 featured uh, restaurants at the James Beard Annual Gala Awards 1998 in New York City. And in between that time and to, in 2012, there were many awards. But in 2012, Vidya participated in the second annual Barley Food Festival at the Metropolitan Pavilion in Manhattan's Chelsea neighborhood with top chefs Padma Laxmi and the Indian celebrity chef Sanjeev Kapoor. More than 2,000 people attended the festival to sample cuisine from 60 high-profile Indian chefs, including our very own Vidj. But I have to tell you something. I have to digress. He's internationally famous and truly accomplished. But I have to comment and tell you that you haven't truly arrived until you're, you're the main subject of a conversation at my aunt's family dinner table in Timmins, Ontario. You're more than internationally famous, you're universally famous. You have to know that this man is also active in the Indo-Canadian arts and cultural community, and he was a special guest and host at the 2011 Indian Summer Festival. In 2011, uh, it was the year of India and Canada, and at that event, he, har he partnered with uh, percussionist Ashwin Sood, blending the sounds and flavors of India, and in 2012, Vidj was featured in the festival, this time leading a culinary tour uh, of India at the opening galley. We are incredibly honored to have this accomplished chef at our Eating Together campaign, and a concept I understand is close to Vidj's heart and is one of the reasons why he created Vidj's at Home in his own name, brand of Frozen Fruits, which we will be showcasing this evening. So after all of that, I bring you up, sir. Well, first of all, namaste, everybody. I am uh, really honored to be here. Um, but I was asked to be part of an Eating Together charity. My first memories of going back to India came alive to me, which was I was never allowed to go out at nighttime. My father insisted that I sat on the table at 8 o'clock every evening and had dinner with him. Even if I ate just one chapati, he would not let me go out. So even when I was 18 and I was dating somebody, I always had to go home, have dinner with them, and then go out if I wanted to go out. So the eating together comes from the Indian community, but eating together is like, you know, uh, coming from the village mentality. Even at the restaurant today, my kitchen staff, we all sit together and we talk. We become each other's shrinks. We discuss things. 
even tonight when I go home, my kids are going to wait and we're going to sit together, have a glass of wine. We talk about things. So eating together to me is an extremely personal thing. It's not just about eating out or eating just for the sake of eating, but it is more for let's talk, let's communicate with each other. You increase that knowledge of, of what does other person think? How have they developed? How is that person developing? Uh, and, and they give you ideas back that, Papa, you're absolutely wrong in this. You're so far behind, it's not even funny. But it is very important. And when, when Touchstone asked me to be part of this, uh, I, I was honored and touched. Repa away from the politics part of it, I think it makes a human being a really solid person because he or she ends up learning things from their grandparents, the, the people who are around them, their mom and dad, and each other. So when the idea of eating together is not just so that you sit at the table and you eat. The idea is that maybe one person is doing their homework on the table. The other one's just working on the computer. When the time comes to eat, you pull everything aside and you set your table up, you open up a nice bottle of wine and you chill and you relax and you talk. And it's, that is very, very important. Eating together should not be just that you're eating for the sake of eating together. Eating together should be you're communicating with each other, you're talking to each other, you're giving ideas, you're getting into fights, you're getting into discussions, you're talking about the pipeline, you're talking about what's important to your child. It's not about just as a dad telling your kids, this is the way it's done, do it. It's more about, well, what, what, what do you feel? It's lovely to see the kids today when they communicate back with you and, this, and, you, and they have something to say to you. You look and say, wow, this is my child. And you're, you're listening, you're, you're, you're communicating with them at that level. Even at the restaurant, we promote eating together. At 11 o'clock when the kitchen cooks their meals, we all sit on the stools and we huddle up and sometimes in the front, sometimes in the back, we all sit down and eat together. Why? Because eating together promotes confidence. It promotes dialogue. And that is very important. We all need to communicate with another human being. And I think personally that is really, really important for me. Not only eating together, but even cooking together should be a part of it. It should not be that kids are just doing their homework and you're in the kitchen, you know, going crazy like, oh my God, I can't find the spice. Oh my God, I can't find this. It should be like, you know what kids, cut the tomatoes, chop the onions, pick the cilantro, put it together. You involve the kids that way, the kids learn to touch. You know, those days when, when I was growing up in India, I mean, I, you know, I grew up in <clears throat> northern India, I'm from Amritsar. And my mother and my father would say, okay, go, go, go buy the chicken. And you would go and buy the chicken and you would skin the chicken and, you know, you would chop the chicken. And I, it, it gave you confidence. It gave you, and you know, when I left India for the first time, I was 19 years old and I had never sat on a plane before. And the first time I sat on a plane was, I was leaving India to go to uh, Austria to study to become a chef. That was the first time I ever sat on a plane. But the confidence that came, came from sitting and eating together with my parents, with my grandparents, with my uncles and aunts. So I am the biggest proponent of eating together. Even if you're just making yourself kidney beans and rice, even if you're making yourself just a simple dal, lentils and something else, but if you eat together, it just promotes beautiful. Sometimes if you want to just watch a Kanak game, or watch a game, go ahead, watch it. But it, do it together. It's the fun aspect of it. And to me, that's why <clears throat> Michael uh, and, and, and Touchstone and the staff has done such a fantastic job of uh, you know, promoting this event. And, and I'm honored. And in saying that, uh, widgets at home curries are more, mostly home style of cooking. If somebody made me a nice bowl of 
chickpea soup and said, Vikram, when you come back from a long day of work, just open it up and serve it. That's the style of cooking that we do. There are no preservatives added. You know that home cooking, that touch of cumin and the cloves and the cinnamon. And I'll, I'll showcase that to you guys a little bit of what we, we, what we try to do with the cooking. People give me all the accolades of Vikram did this and Vikram did that. But to be honest with you, it is my kitchen staff that works from 6.30 in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. Those ladies in the kitchen are my backbone and they all have really solid families. They all come and they work together, but they go back to their families and then they cook and they enjoy their meals together. So on that note, I thank you so much for coming, Michael. Thank you for uh, inviting me, I'm honored. Namaste everybody and let's uh, grab something to eat. I'm gonna go and cook and make a little masala. Now, is anybody here allergic to curry? <laughs> if anybody ever tells you they're allergic to curry, they're bullshitting you. <laughs> because you cannot be allergic to curry. That's like saying I'm allergic to music. You cannot be allergic to music. You may not like a certain kind of music, but you cannot be allergic to music. So that's the important part. I'm going to start cooking. I think Michael wants to say a few more things and then uh, we'll cook, we'll taste some stuff which is at home, chicken curry we've got, we've got some rice, we've got some chickpeas. Thank you very much, I'm honored. Thank you.